What's up guys? I'm going to show you how to how I changed the fuel filter on my 2000 Honda Civic GX natural gas. Um, <clears throat> I got a 250 millimeter 10 inch crescent wrench, a uh, Phillips head screwdriver, a size 6 uh, Allen wrench, um, and then the coalescent filter has a 6 on it. Um, these are just some extra gaskets. Uh, the part number of the filter is, uh, let's see, CLS1126. All right, so I have my car up on um, my Rhino ramp, so you can just jack it up. Um, down here, the first step is we come down and we uh, depressurize the system. Uh, it takes anywhere from a minute to a couple minutes. Um, this, you don't have to run the fuel out of the tank in the trunk. This cuts it off so it separates the back is, is where the tank is and then the front is where it goes. I don't know if you can see. Uh, the fuel lines go down this side and to the vehicle. So all you need to do is turn it this way. It only goes, this is open, this is closed. <clears throat> and we can come up here, and you can see that, um, you know, this is the rest of the fuel lines going to the pressure regulator. Um, and the fuel lines come down under the car over here. The next step after you've you've turned off the ball valve is to come into the uh, engine, turn the engine on, and run the f the rest of the fuel out of out of the system. So as you can see, I'll show you what happens when it runs out of fuel. And that's it. Turn the car off and we'll go to the next step. And now what we have to do is to take off this piece to get on into the um, fuel filter underneath there. So basically we're just going to take off these bolts and then there's some bolts that uh, actually that you just get off, they're like little, um, you just get them off with a Phillips head. And uh, so I'm going to do that right now. You can use a size 10 uh, wrench as well as the crescent wrench or anything that, that adjusts. Uh, you got to take these two bolts off uh, up there. There's one of the screw rivet things. Um, there's another bolt right there. And there's two screw, screw rivets on the side and two little pop rivets in the middle. Mine is missing them. so. All right, so. This is a pain to get off, but I got most of it off. I was going to take this thing off completely, but I think it's going to give me some some aerodynamic drag if I leave it off. Plus there's a bolt underneath that sh heat uh, shield that I don't really want to take off. And look at all these cobwebs, man, it's crazy. So I'm going to clean this up. And that's what we need to get to next. Okay, so I cleaned up all the cobwebs and oh my god, look at all that stuff that was under there. Okay, so now, as you can see, there's all your fuel lines. There's even cobwebs in there. Ugh, I'm trying to get this as good as I can. You see how the fuel lines they actually go down the right there to the front of the car. Again, this is a 
3600 psi so the shutoff valve is shut off to this so this isn't isn't any psi in here because we ran out of gas but you know it's if you're uncomfortable with doing this don't do it uh, I don't want to have any responsibility if anything happens but you know I'm doing it and I'm gonna show you how to do it and you know so do this at your own risk so next what we do is this is the bleeder this is where you take the hex stick it in here and then you loosen it to get rid of all the oil and the, and the residual pressure So, no big deal. You hear a little bit, smell some, some gas. Um, huh? That's it. So, let me put this down here. I'm gonna come at it from another angle and, and remove it. So this is a tricky one. It's hard to get leverage. Last time I did this, I tightened it. All you do is get your crescent wrench, take this out. Now it's got an O ring that just fell in the pan. That right there. The kit that I buy for the filter has an O-ring, so I'm gonna put a new one in. You can't really... You can see in there. You know, it comes... comes out the filter and goes through there and then goes to the car. It goes through this one, comes out this nozzle, through the filter, permeates through the filter and goes through the housing back to the front of the vehicle. I mean, this has been here, I think, I just bought this car, so it's probably been here like 30,000 miles. You can't, you can't see if it's dirty, like a normal filter. It looks basically the same, but you can smell it. You just, what I'm going to start doing is changing my every 10,000 miles. Just, I don't want to get any more issues with clogged injectors. So, grab the new one. Hope this works too, because I accidentally stepped on it, but it didn't bend, so I hope I didn't break it. I'll get this. I'll get this new guy. No problem. Um, actually, why not do that? Whatever. Do this before my battery dies. Okay, so stick it up on there, make sure it's snug. All right, got this bad boy. Put the uh, this ring on it. Boop, boop, boop. And then, uh, as I awkwardly put this back up here. You don't need any oil, because oil is the enemy of the fuel filter, the natural gas. And let's see how coordinated I am doing this upside down. Hand tighten it. And then get back in there with your wrench, tighten it up. I'm gonna do that and then uh, put the plug in, so I'll be back in a second. All right, so, got it in there, um, torqued, you know, just hand tight. Uh, this 
I don't know what the um, if there's like a torque specification, but I just did it where I basically found it, and it was kind of difficult to tighten to begin with and to take off. And I'm freaking filthy and uh. so this one, this one wasn't too hard to get off. So I'm just gonna hand tighten that one. Um, I guess I can try to show you this again. When I did this on my other car, I slipped and cut myself, so I'm trying not to do that again. I don't know if you can see, but can you see that? It looks pretty damn tight, so okay. My wife just came home with pizza, so freaking hungry and tired of doing this, but anyways. So there we go. The the bleeder hole screw thing is back in. The housing is back in. I replaced the thing, made sure it was snug in there, replaced the filter. The next step is to turn this back on. This is going to release the full pressure back into the system. Okay, so no problems there. So hopefully it turns on. Yep. And it runs. There's nothing. I don't smell any gas, nothing's leaking, nothing's coming out. Um, last one I did was this simple, it was really easy. So that's it, you know. Um, try it at your own risk. Like I showed you, it's really easy to do. The filter cost me 30 bucks, uh, 32, and um, I'm gonna start doing this every 10,000 miles. They say it's 15, but I know on my model, the 98s to 2000s, they um, have the third injector problems, and they cost a lot of money to change injectors. So I figure $30 every eight months or so it takes 30 minutes, no big deal. And again, I would take this thing off, but uh, I don't know. I think it's going to have some drag from this thing on the on the high speed, so. Alright, good luck. Like my video and subscribe. Okay, one last thing because I had trouble getting the bolts off. I wanted to show you I removed this bolt, this bolt, this is with a screwdriver, it's a little pop thing. There should be two pop things. You just pop them out and then pull them with like little pop rivets. There's another bolt in there if you want to take the f whole thing off. And then you go back here. <laughs> you move these two main bolts. Where is it? Can't see. Cannot see. This one. This one. 